Welcome to this podcast on information management. This topic involves a conversation revolving around information related to your pet. So it can cover a wide range of topics that that include how to process data, how to evaluate sources, and how to interpret information. These topics are from question six of the 2024 Computer Applications Technology or CAT November Theory Exam. There are three ways that you can engage with the content of this podcast. If you want to test your knowledge, then download the questions first. A link to these questions is in the PDF in the video description. And then attempt the questions. And finally, come back and listen to the answers and compare them with what you got. Another way to engage with the content is to learn new information. And you can do this by first listening to the discussion and then downloading the questions from that link we mentioned earlier and then see how well you remember the answers that were discussed. Or you can simply enjoy the conversation and learn more about information management. So now let's hear what our podcasters have to say about information management. Hello and welcome to another episode of our series where we go through questions from a CAT grade 12 exam paper. In this discussion we explore how information is and should be managed. Today we're focusing on research skills in the computer applications technology curriculum, and I'm joined by Mr. Long to shed some light on the topic. Thank you for being here. Let's kick off with research presentation. Once learners have collected their data, they need to communicate their findings effectively, for example with their pet. Can you state some ways learners can present research information to a target audience? Now, if you remember from your PAT, you were seen particularly in the phase three, that's when you did your presentation. And you remember that you guys did a report where you explained all of your findings and you showed all your research. And then you took that information and put it into a website. So those are two key things that you could have done to show your research to your target audience, creating reports, using Word documents, or using a website. But there are other aspects that you can also use. For example, you could have created a presentation using PowerPoint. You could even go and create a podcast or vodcast. Or you can post your stuff on social media. That could also be a great way to get that information out there. Or a printed media. Maybe you want to put it into a magazine or into a newspaper. There's lots of options available to you. Now, we often think newer sources are always better, but that's not always the case. Can you give a reason why someone might choose to use information from older sources in their research? When finding information, you really do want to get the most recent and up-to-date information. However, there are special cases. For example, if there's old information that hasn't really changed, maybe it's historical information about old events, then that probably hasn't changed much in years. That's normally an okay reason to use it. Maybe... The information is from an established authority or the credibility of the author is very good, then you might trust that information. But as I said, the main thing is that historical data, some information about, for example, World War I or about what happened in the 1800s. That information is not going to change really now. Um, it could still be relevant, but the information hasn't really changed over the last couple of years. But it's always good to compare it to newer sources. If the newer sources haven't changed either, then normally that old information is still useful to use. Questionnaires are a common tool used by learners to gain information for their pet. What are some guidelines they should follow when setting questions for a questionnaire? When it comes to questionnaires, there's so many good tips to make sure that your questionnaire is a good questionnaire. And the most important one that I find is using closed questions. Those are short questions that are easy to answer, but they are very easy to do calculations on. Questions like where the answer is going to be a yes or a no. Questions where you've got a scale of one to five and you must rate something. Questions like multiple choice or questions where the answer is a number. Those are questions where you can actually do statistics on. Try keep your questions short. You don't want to bore the person by having too long um, questions. And try to group your questions as well. Keep, get them into categories so they can see what the theme is. Maybe group the biographical data at the top and then the different topics later on. And don't make them too long. I know I hate answering long questions. They take a lot of time. So the shorter the, the questions or the shorter the length it takes to complete the questionnaire, the more likely you're going to get people to fill it in and to fill it in honestly. Also, always good to use good language. Make sure that it's understandable. Give clear instructions and make sure that it's 
relevant to your target audience. You want to use questions that are relevant to them and give options where possible. That's always helpful. Otherwise, they can give the wrong information. Rather, give them a range of numbers or give them potential options to choose from. And don't use questions that are going to guard them. So, for example, they're going to, that might cause biases. So you don't want to ask questions, for example, do you really think this is hurtful for people? Like that, that implies like you're trying to guard them to a particular answer. You want their honest opinion. So try to be as open-ended and unbiased in your questioning. Let's talk about data processing. Learners often default to spreadsheets, but databases can be a powerful alternative. Can you explain some reasons why a database might be used instead of a spreadsheet when processing research data? I always love a good opportunity to use a spreadsheet. So if the data is too complicated, then I might feel that databases are a bit more superior, especially when it comes to those complex queries. Databases have wonderful tools to do those queries. They also are great at presenting that information in a nice report. You have to format the bit of the information in spreadsheets, but those groupings and calculations make it a lot easier in databases. And also when it, it's about the data, if there's very complicated data or there's lots of tables, databases are great at interacting with multiple sources of data and multiple tables. And to just view that information where with spreadsheets, it does become a bit more complicated. So there are some cases where databases are much nicer to work with when it comes to the data. Here's a practical one. Suppose a learner needs to add an image to their document. What is a word processing feature they could use to acknowledge the source of the image, excluding the use of citations? If you can't use citations, then I would definitely go with the caption option. That's a nice way to put a reference or details about a particular image. Then you can put in a table of figures. You can also use the information and just display it or view it in the bibliography. All the other options are using like an end note or a footnote. Those are also good options to use. And related to that, give an example of the type of data that could be added to acknowledge the source of that image. When using images, we need to give credit where credit is due. So you need to include the image creator if you can find that out. Maybe it's the author or the photographer or the artist's name. You want to make sure that you give credit where credit is due. If the image has a name, you want to mention that. But you definitely want to also mention where you got that image from. So mentioning the hyperlink or the website of the original source, that is also useful. And then you can also put the date of the creation or the publisher. That If that information is available, those are also options that you can display. Now imagine this, a learner is looking at a database report. We will show the report in the video so you may want to have a look at it quickly. What kind of findings could they identify based on the results of a report like this? If we look at that diagram, we can see quite a bit of information. And the first thing I like to look at is if there's any summaries, any particular things that stick out there. And there we can see they've done calculations. They've worked out the average age of those doing the bike race. And there you can see that it's 32. So that's information for us. They've also, under participant name, they've counted how many participants there are. We can see that there are five people doing the bike race. So maybe that is valuable information. Um, straight away, I can actually see there are a lot more people doing the run than doing the bike race. So that might also be useful. So more people want to do the run than the bike. And then you could maybe take, for example, a particular marker, maybe the age 30. And if we look at that as a marker, we can see that there are two people that are doing the bike race that are age 30 or less. And there are three that are 30 or more. They're above 30. They don't include 30. So you could look at a particular marker as an idea. So then you could say that more people in their 30s chose to do the bike race. Something like that. Although that is quite negligible because it's only three versus two. It's not that big of a difference. Um, but the main thing is that average age and probably that there are more runners than there are bikers in this instance. That's what I would probably take from this report. That was really insightful. Thanks so much for taking the time to chat with us today, Mr. Long. Your tips will definitely help learners better understand how to approach their parts and research tasks. It would be great if you could help the channel out by clicking on that subscribe button so that you can help others. Remember, it's at Mr. Long Computer Terms. We also have that other channel at Mr. Long IT and Cat. And remember, don't do it the long way. Do it the Mr. Long way.